You know, it's, you know it's even more awkward? This intro. Because <laughs> it's just me and Bridget. So, today we are going to talk about socialization. Um, about how to socialize, properly socialize dogs with your other dogs, um, your dog with other people, as well as your dog with environmental places, situations, such as the park, uh, Home Depot, like you were saying. Um, so, can we start with the dogs first? Yeah. Dogs first. So what, are your, what do you look for when setting up a social? What's like your go-to? So setting up a social when we're at the facility is pretty easy because mm -hmm. we have an array of dogs and an array of different personalities that we can pick from. So if we're socializing a dog for the first time, um, sometimes, as you know, you kind of know the dog going into it, you know, yeah. are they a little bit more high energy? Are they a little bit calmer? What group can I kind of select for them? Mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's also something where like you're looking, you you kind of like you were saying, pick the dogs that you want to kind of help with the situations mm -hmm. that you're you want to socialize that dog with, right? So saying like if the dog's super reactive, you might want a calmer dog that just like maybe doesn't even want to play. He sniffs yeah. around or does whatever. And because your whole goal with it is to help them kind of realize that reactivity isn't worth it. Right. I think a lot of people just think socialization is to just tire the dog out. Yeah. And that's why like dog parks are so like big mm -hmm. and everything, you know, you get like, like Sully being like an Australian Shepherd, people like ask me all the time, oh, you must take him to the dog park all the time to like, like get no, that energy out. And I'm like, absolutely not. I ain't nope. stepping foot, no dog. Foot. No. So I think that, yeah, that's, it's definitely something where here we do have that option where we kind of can do it. But I think mm -hmm. just picking apart kind of what you're saying is we, when socializing a dog, we luckily do have dogs that, we can pick from that do have those different personalities and the socialization traits and whatever, but that's really what you should look for when socializing, when yeah. setting it up, it shouldn't just be just some random dog at the dog park that no. you're trying to bring over. You know, if it's something where you know that your dog is reactive and your friend's dog yeah. is a little bit older and doesn't really do anything and much that would be, kind of like ideal. So yeah. I think it's really important knowing what you need to look for in a dog to socialize your dog appropriately with. Yeah. You know? And the precautions you take, like here, um, almost every dog that we socialize starts on a muzzle. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll start the dog on a muzzle <clears throat> as a safety precaution, just to read the room, see what they're going to do, see their interactions with the dogs coming in. And we'll usually leave a drag line on, which is just a leash dragging on the ground. At no point should you ever hold a leash when your mm -hmm. dogs are greeting. Um, so that's how we do it here. And we're able to pick from and curate a group specifically designed for a specific dog and pick really social dogs because we temperament test our dogs before we yeah. uh, put them in a group with another supervised dog, I should yeah. say. Like, and, and, and this is something I always tell owners too. It's like, you, you obviously know your dog, yeah. right? Like, you know, it's triggers. Mm -hmm. Even if, even if it's, even if you don't think, you know, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, like subconsciously people will be like, they'll, they'll see that bird or something. They'll kind of mm -hmm. start pulling their dog yeah. away. Right. So it's like, you know, that that's kind of a trigger for them or loud, loud noises or whatever. So I think it is something too that again, just think about the triggers and think about like, Obviously, you want success when socializing your dog, and you have to think about what is going to get me the best success possible, right? Is it short and sweet little successful bursts of socialization, um, or the type of dog that I'm socializing, or the place where I'm socializing them yeah. with? You know what I mean? So I think it's something where instead of just like throwing them in with a certain dog, yes, the muzzle is the most important tool. Yeah. Um, if you need it, if your dog needs it, but it's something that even that it's 
yes, the dog's not going to be able to cause any harm to you or to any of the dogs and stuff, but you don't necessarily want to push them right away over those yeah. limits as well. You know, you want to have that success, you know, as much as possible. Yeah. Um, Even if it feels like silly to muzzle a dog that comes in, I think it's essential to be able to have the person or the trainer be able to read the dog a little mm -hmm. and let things go. A lot of times people can really react to vocalization and they think that any noise is bad, any growling is bad. Some dogs are just, you know, barking mm -hmm. the whole time and social. So the muzzle allows us to stand back and be the observer, the lifeguard in the social rather than feeling like we need to step in to reduce the risk of a fight. Absolutely. So I, that's why I love using muzzles just initially. Yep. Sometimes we can pop them off and I'm like, mm, this is fine. And then other times we're like, let's not push it today. Yep. Let's give them a couple of times. Again, being get successful. that success. Yep. And, and that's, yeah. And that is really important actually that like a lot of people, it's hard to let the dog have that success because you do with, with a lot of stuff here, you know, with a lot of the training, you do need to kind of let them make those mistakes yeah. so that they know that that's a mistake and work through it and stuff with the socialization. It's very much the same thing, but obviously it puts people on guard, especially if they have a past of lunging at dogs yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So it's something that having that muzzle on it really, it, it truly helps the owners. I feel like a lot more as yeah. well because it's something where they can, as, as stressful as it may be for that first couple times and getting to know that these little nips and reactions and stuff mm -hmm. really aren't absolutely aggressive, you yeah. know, or a reason to necessarily stop. It's something that it, it helps the owners to kind of realize that and take that extra deep breath before mm -hmm. they like, like you said, like jump right in and yeah. just like push them up. Because I feel like that's a trigger a lot of times for the dogs is when they have that reaction and then mom and dad come yeah. in and they, and they step in and do it. Yeah. That dog goes, oh, okay, them. cool. So like yeah. I, I must've done the right thing because I started it. Now mom and dad are ending it. Right. So it's something that, but if you let them kind of go at it and let them figure out that socialization, which is the whole purpose of it yeah. again, you know, it's a little bit easier for them. Yeah. As best as I can, as a trainer, and I'm sure you feel similarly, I try to correct for absolutely nothing in the social setting mm -hmm. because I don't want to micromanage the dogs. Dogs know how to communicate with one another far better than we understand absolutely. and far better than we're reading or creating like, oh, his body language, his tail's at 45 degrees, his ears are pinned back. Mm -hmm. And why body language can be helpful to read, it's not the end all and be all for every dog because it right. varies so much. Right. Um, so it's, it's interesting just to start to stand back and see what is this dog socially? Mm -hmm. um, rather than being like, no, you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't be friends with them. Yep. And that's, yeah, and that's that, that's that lifestyle that I feel like a lot of people with like reactive or aggressive dogs mm -hmm. fall into is they have to constantly be micromanaging. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that's, that's like a perfect example of like this socialization will also help you mm -hmm. to kind of take that step. It forces you to kind of have to take that step back and allow them to kind of yeah. have that little bit more of independence and learn for themselves, yeah. right? Whether they're the ones being the jerk mm -hmm. and, and you're gonna, yeah. and you, you're gonna socialize with the dog where even if it's a dog that really doesn't usually play, if you push a dog or if you know a dog enough, it'll at least give you that correction, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, and so they'll learn that way or, or vice versa. If it's something, mm -hmm. you know, where they're kind of going at it and the dog's a little bit more skittish or, or nervous around dogs and the dog's just very social, but coming up and, and yeah. annoying that dog. Right. And they give a correction. Then they learn to kind of stick up for themselves. Yeah. They learn that, okay, this is fine, right? Mm -hmm. Because whereas like, that's, that's kind of the opposite side of the spectrum is, you know, a lot of people, when they have the, the scared dog, mm -hmm. they're, so, they're scared to socialize because they see every dog is just haunting them and they see their dog scared and tucked tail and hiding in the corner. And so they end it so quick. Yeah. But it's something that, you know, allowing that dog to realize it can stick up for itself, mm -hmm. right? It can't be a jerk back and it can't yeah. over exaggerate, but it can absolutely stick up for itself. Um, I think goes a long way for, for them and the owners, obviously, you know, yeah. building that confidence. Exactly. Like you, you see a dog, like, um, I use my dog in socials a lot Sunday mm -hmm. because she's so excellent at giving corrections to other dogs that are annoying her. Yeah. 
And I almost want a dog that's going to be able to give a safe, healthy correction in the social that's not going to be overkill because I want to see how the new dog responds to being corrected. Mm -hmm. Some dogs will instantly go into fight mode and be like, all right, let's throw hands. We're ready yep. to go down. Other you started dogs this. Like, I'm going to end it. Yeah. So it's interesting to see when they are, other dogs are communicating with them, like how they're going to respond to that. Mm -hmm. And those are kind of like the two big things that I look for, you know, in, in terms of socialization for, for regardless of why I'm socializing the dog, right? Is can they take a correction appropriately and can they give a correction yeah. appropriately, right? Exactly. Those two big things, like if you can do that, mm -hmm. I don't, I, I, you know, with certain ex exceptions, obviously, yeah. that's a very good sign, right? Mm -hmm. Because then that means I can put you with super high maintenance dog mm -hmm. or energetic dog that's going to be go, go, go 24-7 mm -hmm. and you can tell it to leave you alone or yeah. whatever if you need to. But, you know, it's, or, or vice versa. But so in terms of socializing the dog, right? So muzzling, mm -hmm. if, if need be, um, is always the safe option. Even if like you've never had a problem, yeah. I feel like muzzling, especially if it's a new dog sure. that you're bringing around, even if it's a dog that you've met multiple times before, yeah. just muzzle. Yeah. I feel like it's the safest way to do it, right? Um, like you said, like the drag line um, is super, super nice because then it's something you don't have to put yourself in that situation, yeah. right? A lot of people get bit because they have to, they don't grab. have the lead on, yeah. so they grab the collars or something and they get redirected on. But the lead, at least you have something mm -hmm. from a distance, right? Sure. To kind of pull them away. Um, and what else? I think it'd be probably pretty nice for us to talk about how can clients or owners socialize their dogs on their own without oh, yeah. being at the training facility. Right. Cause we get, I get asked that a lot. I'm like, how do they continue to socialize successfully? Mm -hmm. Um, and I've had several clients that have done it. Um, not that it's the wrong way, but have done it where it's been very unsuccessful and then clients that do it in a really safe, productive manner. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, how do you feel people can start to socialize on their own? So I feel like the, the biggest struggle that I find with, with people that are trying to socialize but are struggling to do it is they just don't know enough dogs yeah. or... Enough good socially right, dogs. Right. Or, or, you know, uh, they don't know where to do it, exactly. uh, yeah, you know, and stuff like it. that. So it's a big one. Yeah. So for, for me, it's something where it's... It doesn't have to be long, right? Mm -hmm. And Keep and it, it short. right, and it and it doesn't have to be super often, mm -hmm. right? So, even if it's something where you find that opportunity, where like you know you have that friend's dog that is a little bit older or whatever, right? And you think it's going to be a good fit, like I said, you know, mm -hmm. if if you can't, if you don't know many people with dogs or whatever, or people that are appropriate enough that fit that quality of what you're looking for, then yes. I would, I would say like trying to find somewhere where you can do that would be fine. But for me, it's something that even if you can find that 10 minutes or so yeah. of just, of just going over to that friend's house and being like, Hey, you know, after you get off work, I'm just going to come by. We're just going to do this real quick and try to see your dog fits perfectly with what I'm trying to look for. Right. And then kind of trying to, you know, obviously the other stuff, mm -hmm. muzzle, lead, um, keep it successful yeah. and then, and then see how that goes. I find the biggest thing I have to like tell people too, is like that other dogs mm -hmm. owners have to be on the same page. Yeah. They help you have to exactly. be very transparent of what they're doing and as well. Expectations right? are if shit does hit the fan. Yes. Um, if you say, Hey, if this doesn't work out, let's leave drag lines on both of our dogs. You yeah. get your dog, I get my dog and yeah. we'll separate them. Mm -hmm. If, if the worst case scenario happens, and I think like where to meet is, is a good one. Yeah. Um, I personally don't think it's super successful to have dogs meet in the home. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people do that, but I highly suggest a backyard and having the resident dog in it. You can do it in several different ways, but having the resident dog in the yard already and mm -hmm. having the new dog come through, um, dropping the leashes and letting that happen organically. We should never ever hold the leashes and have the dogs like greet on leash. 
Um, and like you said, go into it with the purpose of this is going to be our dog's socialization. This isn't like a friend hangout where we're going to be here for hours. Yeah. And then the dogs get overwhelmed mm -hmm. and inevitably sometimes things don't go as well, which yeah. is very reinforcing to the dog. I can make other dogs go away if I don't like it, yep. if something does happen. Um, another thing to mention too, whether your dog does resource guarding or the other dog or, or whatever, or even if you've never even seen it, no toys, no mm -hmm. food, no and affection. affection. Yes. That affection is always is the, the one that gets skipped over. People, and it's, yeah. It's so hard. Because people will be here and they're like petting both dogs at once and they're like, look, they, uh -huh. they're being so good. <laughs> and then your dog's like, who the hell is this getting all my attention? Mm -hmm. Um, so affection, eye contact, talking to the dog should not happen. Yeah. You know, that's a really hard one for people. And it's, and it's also like the most dangerous, I feel like, because yeah. again, you're putting yourself in the middle of it, yeah, right? Exactly. You are interacting with either your dog or another dog, right? And your dog is getting jealous in whatever situation. And now your hands are in the middle of it or mm -hmm. you're crouched down or on your knees or something where your face is right into it. Like. That, yeah, that is always one that I feel like it's hardest for the people to, to not do. Yeah. But then when shit hits the fan, they instantly and realize. Like, How did this happen? Right. <laughs> you know? So, yes. So, no food, toys, affection. Keep it neutral. Like, yep. your job essentially is to stand there and supervise. You don't want to get nitpicky about what your dogs are doing. If you are utilizing an e-collar, you mm -hmm. should have your e-collar set to the highest setting as that emergency break. Sometimes here we'll use pet correctors or um, in case of an absolute emergency, we have a crop yeah. to separate fights. Mm -hmm. And that would only be used in the situation of an actual fight. That's the only time that we'll use it. Luckily, that does not happen often <laughs> no, at all. Very um, lucky. But yeah. things like that, like socializing in a neutral place, if neither, a lot of people don't have yards. So go around your neighborhood, scope out maybe, do you have a tennis court in your, near a playground? Um, if your dogs have some recall, you can do it in a field with the soft mm -hmm. fenced. But a lot goes into that as well. Yeah, I, I don't really like the in-house stuff as well, just because like, they, they just need room. Yeah. Like it's like, like, it's like you're dodging couches yeah. and you're following them. And you're, and, and, you know, again, if, if we're supposed to be kind of like the fly on the wall too, mm -hmm. you know, like then we're kind of moving around constantly as well. Whereas like, if you even have like a backyard, even if it's a small one, it's, you know, probably going to be a little bit bigger than at least sure. the living room, you know? And then you like, it's a lot easier to lose sight of the dogs if they're running into a different room. Yeah. And, you know, that's also very important to keep an eye on them, you know, have an eye on them the whole time. Don't go over to socialize your dog and then go back inside and like have a yeah. beer or something and like yeah, not be watching. Yeah, watch them. it. It's like toddlers um, by a swimming pool. You have to, go, you have <laughs> yeah. to watch it. Exactly. You can't take your eyes off it for a second. And not that you have to feel really on edge about it, but we should be able to supervise and manage it. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I feel like I definitely lost my train of thought there. I had a, I had a good example. Oh, uh, I had a social or somebody perform a social recently. Yeah. And like we mentioned earlier, you should really try your hardest never to socialize with a stranger dog. Mm -hmm. And my client socialized with a stranger dog. She already knew it was a mistake when she texted me, but there's a toy involved and the puppy that, was new to the group uh, came up and tried to take the toy away and her dog ended up biting the puppy yeah which sent them into a downward world spiral thinking that their dog was a monster mm -hmm. and he certainly is not mm -hmm. it was just a mistake in hindsight of, of course you, you want to take toys out of it you want to take affection out of it and you want to kind of know the dogs that you're socializing with yeah yeah I, absolutely and and like you were saying like having the dog out in the yard and then bringing mm -hmm. the, the, the new dog in or, or vice versa, it allows them to kind of, you know, at least one dog kind of see the other one, right? Yeah. And this is what I always say, kind of going back, using an example of in the facility, is I will always bring the dogs out mm -hmm. first and then bring the dog that I want to socialize yes. kind of in that, in in that neutral area. Yeah. yeah. 
That way they know exactly when I open that gate, they know exactly mm -hmm. what they're getting themselves into yeah. instead of, you know, something where all these dogs are just running out mm -hmm. <laughs> random places. In ever. crates, so yeah. suddenly surprising them. Exactly. So it gives them a minute just to kind of sniff them all. And it gives us a minute to evaluate, okay, if this dog comes up to the fence, mm -hmm. right, when the, when the dog I want to socialize is right here, and they're just going ballistic, right, mm -hmm. maybe that's not, probably not the best dog to start off with, with socializing. Yeah. But if they come up to the fence and they're sniffing and then that dog walks away and then... Even if he's getting like a little vocal or something, like, okay, that's not super aggressive. Yeah. You're not trying to like chew through the wire to get yeah. this dog, you know, like, okay, now I can put that muzzle on and have a little bit more of a success. So I think that's always good too, mm -hmm. is just letting them at least like sniff each other. Because mm -hmm. if you get a dog that's super skittish or reactive or whatever, you know, that can be some, you know, I, I, f I feel like a, most fights start in those first couple seconds, yes. you know, yeah, so it's something it's where, yeah, if you can desensitize them, the muscle. exactly, to like that smell or to the sound of them coming in, I think that helps a lot to at least bring that initial intensity yeah. or stimulation down. And when we do socials, like a lot of people have in their minds that for it to be successful, your dog has to play. And that is not the case at all. If your dog is in a group of dogs and they're kind of casually walking around, sniffing a little bit, that is successful. If Absolutely. If they're not engaged in the same way as in playing, romping around, that doesn't mean your dog's terrible. It doesn't mean your dog's not social. Right. That just might be either they're building their confidence to get there or they're just not a dog that's super playful. They just don't care. Yeah. Which is totally fine. I know a lot of people like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? like, it's like people are different. Some people are more introverted and yeah. some people are more extroverted. And you just, again, goes back to finding a good match where uh, the new dog isn't going to be pestered and annoyed right. by the new or the older dogs. And mm -hmm. a new dog can start to develop their confidence in that setting. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so then with people... Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, a lot of similar things as yeah. well, um, but also a lot of different things. Um, so with socializing with people, I usually give you know you, the most common example is people yeah. coming over to your house, yep. right? So usually the go-to is dog is in a bed stay the with the muzzle on yeah. or a crate. Yep. With a muzzle on. If they need the muzzle, if they have like aggression well, yeah. issues yeah. with um, I guess I'm thinking most dogs. extremes. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And and um yeah, I guess this is more, yeah, the extreme sure. of the aggression or whatever yeah. side of it. Um having them hold the bed stay or yeah, or in that crate, giving them time to desensitize themselves in a way of smelling, hearing, mm -hmm. seeing those people. Um and then when the owner feels it's ready, right, or appropriate, going ahead and just releasing mm -hmm. the dog, right? Still with that muzzle on, even if you want to have that drag mm -hmm. line on too, I think is still a really good example or, or reason to have it on. Um, and this, this is like, to me, the most important part about greeting new people is allowing the dog to greet you. Yeah, right? don't have your guests come into the dog's space, pull it in with the leash, right. trying to lure it over with a tree. Food, yep. yeah. That's one one thing I always see. And this is even like growing up. This is like way before I even got into the dog training stuff. You know, I remember like doing that all the time. You know, if someone hands you a treat, oh, here, just give, give that to him and, and he'll love you. Set your house on fire. Yes. You know. And, but what that does is it gives them an exact reason of like, why does, why do you have my food? Mm -hmm. Right? Why do you have something that I should want? And it's like luring them in and you don't want to rely on a lure to have your dog be comfortable with guests. Yes. Absolutely. It can feel like a bait and switch where the person's like luring them in and trying to force affection, yep. which is, can be incredibly scary for dogs. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get a lot of those things where it's like at first they get like they seem really excited or intrigued because they do see that lure. But then you come in with that surprise kind of mm -hmm. swoop and they're like, what the heck? Yeah. And they get that little nip, you know. That's also something kind of how you were ending with the uh, socializing the dogs. If a dog doesn't 
care to play or yeah. isn't super playful, it doesn't mean it's not successful. Mm -hmm. Same same thing with greeting people. Mm -hmm. If your dog gets released and they just chill there or they like yeah. want to walk over and just sit right by the owner, totally fine, yeah. right? The whole point is that you don't attack the new people, yeah. right? So if that's the case, that's their choice and that's totally fine. If they do get comfortable enough or, or eventually wander over to you, mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and kind of just sit there, that's totally fine. But, um, but I think that's always like the biggest thing for me to like tell people is don't feel like you need to like push yeah. it, push yeah. that invitation, you know? And like on the opposite spectrum, if we do have a pretty friendly dog that loves people, um, the pendulum swings. So if we allow our dogs to have this like super excited jumping all over the guests, mm -hmm. um, kissing them, getting on the furniture with them. We're basically telling our dogs they do not have to listen to us or behave in the presence of guests, which is going to really be a downfall for you in yeah. the long run. Um, whether our dogs love the people that are coming in or they're still getting used to them, I want to understand that I have, my dog to understand that I have control of the situation. Mm -hmm. So how I'll often start is my dogs are penned up or on a bed. I have my people come over and 15 to 20 minutes, once the initial excitement, oh my God, this person's here, dies down, like you said, I'll release. Mm -hmm. If my dogs choose to come up, that's great and they can interact if the interactions are healthy. Right. Um, if my dog chooses to stay on the bed or go into a different room, that's totally okay too. Mm -hmm. You should never force it. And that's, and, and, and that's kind of how I start every single one of my mm -hmm. like send homes with with the owners seeing their dogs again and everything is the first thing we do is i bring the dog in yeah. and let them say That's hi and know they're going to be really excited right so they come in all excited they see the owners and everything the owners are very excited they see the dog that's where you you we instantly work on the jumping yeah and and i always explain to it as you know it's not that I'm trying to shut your dog down. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm trying to change his personality or ruin this person personality of him being excited. I want it to be known that there's a threshold, right? Yeah. Because a lot of times the dogs, they act on impulse. They mm -hmm. get excited and so they jump, right? They, that's just how they yeah. interact, right? They don't know it's necessarily something wrong until you tell them yeah, it's wrong. They're not going to know it's wrong until you have a consequence for jumping. Right, exactly. So so then having that, having to deal with that a little bit more and, and that initial greeting where they're both really excited, mm -hmm. you know, it's something that telling your guests mm -hmm. or in this situation, the owners, hey, I get, you know, my dog's a young puppy and is all hyper and everything like that. Don't create a bad behavior for him by getting by matching that level of and excitement. Like, oh my God. Right. And then the baby you're talking, excited, picking up, and all that's that stuff. reinforcing the, for the dog to keep jumping. And they're like, oh my God, I'm getting what I want. Right, right. This is Again, great. they don't they don't realize, especially if you're doing that, they don't realize it's a bad thing, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that having that clear communication to whoever your dog is meeting as well is super important, right? Yeah. Is something whether regardless of the issues your dog has, whether it's just super excitement or, or more anxiety or whatever it may be, it's something that telling your guests to just like yeah, relax, just, like chill. calm down, maybe even tell your guests, hey, can you completely ignore my dog for yeah. the first 15 minutes? Right, exactly. And just let them do their thing, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think that's also a really important thing to have that communication sure. yeah, between the guests um, because it's something where once that the training is implemented for the dog, you know, you have that communication open for that, right? Yeah. And it's something where, you know, I, I do have a lot of uh, clients that they struggle with telling their their mom and dad mm -hmm. to not be excited and to not yeah, yeah. sneak them treats and exactly. do all this stuff, right? And it's and it's hard. Like, it, it's I, I definitely have that with certain friends too that just yeah. like... Push a little bit. Yeah, like, Sully hey. sees my dad and he yeah. just goes bonkers yeah. but it's like because it, and it's something that we have to continuously work on because it's something where when he was young when he was a puppy before we even got him trained it was it was very much like mm -hmm. oh grandpa's here you know like we'll get really excited and do yeah. all this stuff and give me all those treats and everything where again he doesn't know it's bad mm -hmm. he doesn't know that we're creating bad behaviors with it 
but it is something that even just that one person, we have now, it's mm -hmm. lasted this whole interaction thing where we still have to kind of yeah. work on it being three years later, yeah. right? So it's something that these small things, the first time these people meet your dog mm -hmm. are really important, I feel like. And if you have a problem with your dog's jumping and performing those behaviors, a lot of trainers, like, I know we pretty much said the opposite, put your dog on a bed stay, put your dog in a crate. But if your dog does not struggle with aggression issues mm -hmm. and you want to work on jumping directly, you can have the guests come in and mm -hmm. not have the dog in any command. So you can directly correct them when they jump. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, well, won't that make my dog not like guests? Won't that dog make ruin our relationship if I start correcting my dog for jumping on me? Mm -hmm. And at first, your dog is going to feel that correction back off and be like, whoa. But you start to see they can be excited to see you without their paws jumping on you yep. or their paws touching you. Um, so that's another way we can handle it is have our dogs be free and we set the boundary with jumping or jumping on the furniture and help the dog understand that is the direct issue that we're working on. Yeah. Yeah. Just because, you know, like you, there are consequences mm -hmm. to their actions does not mean that they're going to hate you, right? No. It, you are their you are their life, right? The dogs, you get so many dogs that hate everyone else in the world, but they love their owners, yeah. right? So it's something where it's like, it is not something where it just flips a switch like that. If you're doing it appropriately, if you're giving those corrections appropriately, I've hit C or whatever, right? You know, but, um, but it's something that, you know, we, we do have to have that communication with the dogs for sure. Um, I always, yeah, I always use the example too of a lot of times people, they, they allow the furniture access or whatever, right? Um, but my, my kind of insight with that is that not every person you have over is going to be as big of a dog fan as you. Right? And they don't like your dog as much as you like your dog, yes. unfortunately. Right. And I can promise you guys, nobody wants your dog jumping on them, even if they're like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. And unfortunately, nobody dog, nobody wants your dog on the furniture with them. Especially and if you got a, a bigger dog too. Yeah. And clawing them, like they don't want fur on them. Mm -hmm. So even if people are being polite about it, you got to cut the shit. Right. You got to cut your dog out from doing that. And that's, uh, yeah, and that's something that, that is, is very common that again, mm -hmm. you fall into that awkward situation where you know you let your dog jump on the bed when it's just you guys but then when you have guests over they just they assume they can do the same thing because yeah. if, if, if I can do it with mom and dad or whatever right if I can do it with the owners then I can definitely do it with these random people right so it's something that not only is it like if they're excited and stuff like that but if yeah. you're especially if you're working through certain aggressions yeah. or resource guarding or yeah. something Never You've worked. now just allowed your dog to go face to face with your guests, right? Yeah. That is super scary, super tense, right? And it's something that should just never be even an option for the dog. And it allows your dog to feel like they have control over the social situations. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to get on the couch and smell this person and get in their face. And that can be intimidating. Yep. And that can just kind of show the dog they're at the same level as the guest, where it's our job to step in and be like, I know you're a lot on the couch with me most days, but right now I have a guest over mm -hmm. and I'm flipping the script up on you. I'm going to correct you if you get on the furniture. Yep, absolutely. And again, just creating that very clear line, right? And then they have the bed stay or down stay, mm -hmm. right? Just, just put them there while they yeah. just chill, right? They don't need to, whether it's excitement and they just need to calm down a little bit or it's aggression and they just need to calm down a little bit, right? Whatever it may be, um, that, that's why the bed is so important. Yeah. Um, giving them a place to go and relax without the fear of the guests, people over getting in their face. Yep. Your dog just needs a cool off spot. Um, and that could either be the bed or their crate, whichever you're working on. Mm -hmm. If you, if your dog does know a bed stay, obviously I'd choose that rather than creating my dog because I want to know that I can set that boundary rather than the crate walls being stuck. Being, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, and yeah, and, and that's why I like the beds as well is it gives the dog a little bit more freedom, regardless of their reason why they're on there, gives them a little bit more freedom in the sense of like, 
readjusting, getting up. If, if someone else comes in and they like shoot up and they like are sitting or standing, right, to see who's coming in, but they still stay on that bed, totally fine, right? Mm-hmm. You can also see their body language kind of relax a little bit more so you have an idea of, okay, my dog's standing at the very edge of the bed, <laughs> clearly, yeah, clearly not ready to get off yet. If they're laying down, they're calmed down, they're half yeah. asleep, okay, now you're ready yeah. to get off, right? Yeah. Now you've achieved what I'm looking for out of that that reasoning, right? The downs, you, you absolutely like can do a down, but it is definitely more restricting than them laying down, you know, right? Yeah. It's definitely more restricting where they, they usually have to stay within that, that position. Mm-hmm. Um, so in a tense situation, it can make it a little bit more stressful yeah. for sure. Yeah, and, and aggression issues specifically, obviously, we'd handle this in a lot more safer of a manner. Muzzling, mm. like we mentioned, yeah. muzzling the dog upon entrance. And there are a lot of my dogs that like don't struggle necessarily with aggression, but they can be snappy. Mm-hmm. And um, when I do have guests over, those dogs sometimes don't even come out of their crates the whole time. Because I don't need, my dog's success with people doesn't need to be contingent on the guests acknowledging them Mm -hmm. or paying attention to them. I just want to be like, my dog's just not coming out right now because they know what they're capable of. And I want to enjoy the time with my friends without worrying, like interrupting my friends and being like, hey, don't do that. Don't get in his face. Having to micromanage. It it makes things a little awkward. And Mm -hmm. sometimes you're just trying to have a drink, get your drink on with your friends. Yep. You want it to be chill. Maybe you're not as observant. It's okay to put your dog away. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I definitely think that it's, it's very important that, again, similar to, the, to socializing the dogs, short and successful bursts are totally fine. Yeah. If your dog comes out for 10 minutes and, you know, and they're totally fine, and whether they're amped up or stressed out or whatever it is, and they're coming around, they're sniffing, they're doing that, whatever. Cool. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go outside. So you're gonna go back in your crate, or we're gonna be doing something else. So I can't. I don't have the time to focus on you and making yeah. sure that you're gonna be appropriate and not bite my guests or something. Yeah. Um, or vice versa. You know, if if you can't, you know, completely trust that guest from not, mm-hmm. like you were saying, not listening to your instructions mm-hmm. and trying to sneak them a treat on the bed yeah. or whatever. Right. Then. Okay, you, we got to put them yeah. away because I can't trust yeah. you either. People don't have good impulse control when <laughs> yes. it comes to when it comes to dogs mm-hmm. and you can never quite predict. And you, you're always going to have that one friend and everybody can think of this one friend or family member that pushes the limit a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes it's not even worth it because I don't want an incident to happen to sour the relationship. My relationship with my friends and family is more important than my need to have my dog say hi to you. Yep. Um, and it, if you are the guest going to somebody's house, please don't be the person that's like, can't you let him out? I feel right. so sad for him. Uh-huh. Please open the door. He just looks so sad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I mean, he's just kind of chilling in there. Right. Sad and sleepy are, are very different. Yeah. Looking looks very similar. <laughs> and calm. People always are like, oh, that dog is calm. They must be sad and have a horrible life. And the dog is like, you know what? Yeah. If they're not foaming from their yeah. mouth and like <laughs> on the edge of. Vibrating. Yeah. With excitement, um, it's okay for your dog to just kind of chill out. Uh-huh. And teaching them that is a really powerful skill. Yes. Especially for certain breeds that like. Yeah. That are constantly like go, 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 you know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a big struggle for some people. And, and having that kind of communication, that control mm-hmm. is really important. It goes a long way. Um, anything else with people? Any other? I think we cover all our points with yeah. people and it kind of ties into the next topic is socializing environmentally, mm. which is chef's kiss. One of the best <laughs> things I've taught my dog is to adapt to the environment. So from the time my dogs were young or I first got them, I would take them to parks, mm-hmm. um, take them to Home Depot pet stores and have a managed structured visit to those places. So dogs are getting used to the sight, sound, smell of other people, of the environment that we're seeing. How spooked are they if a car backfires? How mm. spooked are they if we're at Home Depot and somebody slams wood down? Yep. Or the forklift beeping. Yeah. That's always my my mm-hmm. I golden dick. Like if I can get to Home Depot with a dog yeah. and there's a forklift, 
I am like running to get to that forklift. Yeah, yeah. And I just recently had a client today, even that the first session, the dog was petrified of everything. Mm -hmm. She had to take a trip to Chicago and she said the dog didn't pee for three days because of all the environmental sounds around him. Right. He was absolutely terrified. So today it was our ninth session and we took him to Home Depot and we got the forklift, we got a awesome. busy store, we got wood slamming, we pushed a cart next to him and this dog fucking killed it. He was awesome. Yep. And the worries of what was going to happen to him melted away because we had set into place, you are in a heel position right now mm -hmm. and you can't leave that. Mm -hmm. And that built his confidence so much. Yeah, I, I, I think that the dog... In situations like that, sometimes the dog doesn't realize that the owners have like their best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. They just think that they're going, they're they're both experiencing this at the same time. Yeah. They're freaking out it's or whatever. Like, Why aren't you worried? Exactly. And so it's something that again, having that communication, we have a way of letting them know that like I am in control of the situation, mm -hmm. right? You stay at my heel. You listen to that come command and. If that bike, bicycles coming by or whatever, and they're flying by and they're scared of bikes, I'm going to move over. You're going to move over with me. We're going to create that safe distance. Mm -hmm. And then that bike's going to go back and you're going to realize he wasn't coming to crash him. into you. Yeah. Right? Yes. Or that forklift is going to come by or that mm -hmm. semi's driving by and sounds really loud. You don't have to necessarily dart in any direction. Yeah. You just have to stay here. And yeah. that's one thing that I... Um, I get a lot of questions about too is in those situations of, you know, that, that bike going by and they kind of comes from behind them, they get scared and they kind of shoot forward. I do still, you know, if again, yeah. because we use e-collars, I still do give a correction yes, for that yeah. because it's something that I want them to know that yes, you're scared, but you, you, one, you don't need to be as long as you stay within this bubble because there's nothing I will allow to happen to you exactly. if you stay yeah. within that that bubble and I think that helps them to gain a lot of confidence like you yeah. were saying you're not correcting your dog because they're fearful and you know people are often like why would you ever correct a dog when it's scared mm -hmm. I'm not correcting the dog because it's in a fearful mindset I'm correcting because with that fearful mindset they're darting and yes. they're fleeing and we need to be like like you said I'm your protector I've got this and mm -hmm. that allows your dog to develop the confidence in you and yeah. Then anything that happens in their environment, they can kind of chill out. Yeah. And they can always look at you if they get it. And that's, that's always like something I love to see is if I get a dog that's scared of loud cars or some motorcycles, whatever, mm -hmm. and we finally get a motorcycle that goes by and the first thing they do is kind of look at me, mm -hmm. right? That's perfect, mm -hmm. right? That, that means you're, you're, you're clearly looking to me because you're like, hey man, I'm about to freak out. Yeah. Don't know what to do. I'm hoping you kind of know the right mm -hmm. answer, right? Um, but it's something that, you know, that, that takes, it takes time, but it's again, going back to correcting for shooting out. It's something that, because a lot of people like at that as well. Well, don't you feel bad for correcting them because, because they're scared or when they're scared. And I would rather correct my dog so that it knows that it doesn't need, that is not the appropriate reaction to being scared rather than my dog that motorcycle comes by, gets scared, jumps in the middle of the street. And gets hit by a yeah, car. You right. Know? So it's like because it was scared of that car, mm -hmm. right? So it's something that, you know, or runs into something else or whatever, gets tangled around a pole and starts freaking out, right? All these situations that, again, a lot of people don't really think about until it happens. And then it becomes a much more serious thing. Yeah. Right? Um, so in terms of environmental, it's more of, I guess... The reason we're talking about it is more of like the benefits of it um, with having to like be able to kind of do that younger, mm -hmm. right? And, and work through those situations. Um, in terms of environmental like places, is there, is there certain places that you recommend for just dogs in general or like for specific mm -hmm. dogs, for more anxious dogs, for more yeah. aggressive dogs? What yeah. kind of, what, what places do you kind of re recommend? Well, if I'm just starting the process of integrating my dog out into public where I don't 
really know what the environment's going to be like, whether it's going to be loud or quiet. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'd start incorporating, if I'm sitting in my backyard or on my porch um, and having my dog kind of have that people watching, mm -hmm. what, what if you have that available to you, if you don't, going to a park and going to the furthest bench and kind of sitting, keeping your distance from people. Um, I used to take like a half cup of my dog's kibble and keep her with me. And I didn't care if she sat. I didn't care if she was on a bed, obviously. Mm -hmm. I cared that she was just kind of not pulling away from me and trying to go smell everything. I kept her by me. And I reinforced when she was good, uh, when she gave me attention, when she looked at me. And I feel like because I did that, we were able to start up the challenge a little bit mm -hmm. and maybe go to a brewery, maybe go to a coffee shop, um, which I don't do very often with my dogs. Yeah. But being able to incorporate them into louder environments is like level up, level up. But you always want to start with just the basics. Yep. Again, building that success. Yeah. One that uh, going to like restaurants and stuff like that reminded me another big thing that a lot of people skip over. Um, but I think is like essential, especially when going out to like public mm -hmm. places and stuff like that is doorways. Mm -hmm. Doorways are so important because if you have a super excited dog most of the time, you know, that they open that door and just like leaving the house, they open yeah. the door and yep, they shoot right out. So having that kind of, again, not even necessarily making them sit or lay down or do whatever, but just not when the second that door opens one inch, the dog's already trying to shove their nose in or whatever and burst yeah, through. Yeah, and they're right? through the door before you are. Right. And so, and then it's something where you never know if, you know, sometimes you don't know if there's going to be someone on the other side of that door or whatever. And so it can just cause a little havoc sometimes. So I think making sure you have somewhat control at the doorways are, is, is yeah. very, very important as well. I think that's um, a good one. Yeah, especially going out to, to the patios or to restaurants or whatever, you know. Um, or even over to, the, you know, the friend's house if you're, if you're doing yeah. socialization or something. Because it just spikes that stimulation up. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, you're, it's a lot harder to communicate. It's a lot harder to get their attention because mm -hmm. they're so excited. But if you can get their attention and maintain that control while you're going through that big mm -hmm. stimulation, it will be able to kind of control that a little yeah. bit more. You don't want to feel like you're micromanaging your dog in public settings. Mm -hmm. So usually in our training programs, how we'll incorporate that is um, in the one-on-one -on -one specifically, maybe I'll start with Edgewater and we're going to go into it and we're going to work on your heel first. I'm not correcting your heel and then having the dog sit and then having the dog down and doing all these things. I want them to be able to adapt in the environment with one really strict parameter that I'm holding them accountable to. Mm -hmm. And then after we got our heel positioning, you start to see the body language just relax. Yep. Whether you're in Home Depot and they're like, okay. Mm -hmm. Then we move on to our sits maybe, do a little bit of duration with that. And you can even separate those sessions entirely. Yeah. Where sometimes you go and you're like, we're going to work on your heel. Now we're going to work on your sit. Now we're going to work on your down. Mm -hmm. um, and as your dog gets more proficient, you can do a mix of those things as needed. But yep. just letting them absorb the environment. Another thing we have to mention always is not letting anybody approach them when they're... Oh, I almost forgot about that. That's good. Yes. Yes. Especially when you're working through stuff, whether it's exciting, whether it's either a spectrum, you know, super mm -hmm. excited, cute little puppy or whatever, or more of an aggressive, anxious, kind of reactive dog. Um, yeah. Don't let anyone, don't let anyone mm -hmm. come up because you don't need... Any extra situations, any extra stress on yourself or on the dog, right? Um, you're, you're looking for success, mm -hmm. so keep it successful. Right? And I don't want my dog to constantly being like, oh, is that person going to come up to us? Whether it's in a negative or positive way, whether they're scared or they're like, yes, I love people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if, yeah, if you get that happy-go-lucky puppy, then every single person you pass, they're mm -hmm. shooting over and they're trying to say hi. And they're like, well, because this is okay, you know, I'm just going to go say hi. I'm going to go get stimulated and say hi. And and that's where it's cute as a puppy, but then when they grow up and they're... It's not so cute anymore. Yeah, 50, 60 pounds, and they're pulling your arm out of your socket. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not so much fun. Yeah, I mean, there are people out there that love 
to have garner the attention that their dog brings them mm -hmm. and they love when people say hi to their dog and they love talking to strangers and I, I can't understand that personally yeah but i know that there are people <laughs> that love it so i'd suggest if you do want your dog to say hi to people which i don't recommend i have mm -hmm. to say that but doing it in a structured way with having your dog in a down or a sit position and having the person maybe pet them if that is what you want to do if your dog's not yep. aggressive obviously yeah with aggression or nippiness i do not recommend having anybody come up to your dog at any point no yeah or dogs yeah yeah absolutely um i feel like we covered everything pretty yeah. well I'm trying to think of anything else but i think that might be it yeah socialization in general i think we want to be safe with everything and we want to go into it building our dog's confidence. Mm -hmm. So as you're going through it the next few weeks, maybe um, try some of the tips and tricks we talked about today. And yeah. I think you'll start to see a big difference if you're incorporating more environmental stimuli mm -hmm. or dog stimuli into your dog's life. Yep. And always go slow. Go at, go at the pace that you're comfortable with and the pace yes. that you feel like your dog That's is comfortable one. with, yeah. um, regardless of what kind of socializing you're doing. Um, and then just keep building up small mm -hmm. steps. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right, guys. Well, happy socializing. Yes. Be we'll, safe. We'll catch on the flip side. <laughs>